Well, as you can see, the latest model from Zigu in China has arrived. It's the X6100 HF transceiver, covers 160 meters to 6 meters. And as you can see from this video clip, it's got a nice crisp color screen. And we shall be featuring this radio very shortly in an upcoming video. So keep in touch and don't forget to press the subscribe button so you know as soon as the video is published. The subject of this video is coax cable. Not the most riveting subject for a video, I grant you, but really and truly coax cable is very important. We all use coax cable in a ham radio station in one shape or form. And it's actually been prompted by a couple of uh, messages I had. And one message said, I've been advised to buy the most expensive cable I can afford because it'll be a great investment. Well, I'm not quite sure I would agree with that because first of all, you need to know how much cable you need and what you're going to use the cable for and how your aerial development is going to take place and so on and so forth. So if you buy the most expensive cable you can afford and then you find that it's not long enough because you change your mind, you want to do this and do that, and maybe, maybe you've wasted your money because if you buy the most expensive cable you can afford, it's great at VHF and UHF and it's of course great at HF. But are you spending money you don't need to? Because some of the lesser spec cable, in other words, the sort of uh, lower spec cable is still great for HF and you don't want to spend more than you have to. So my advice would be watch this video and then make up your mind. Now, I did um, a little clip about uh, three weeks ago going back 50 years and it proved quite popular. <laughs> So I thought before I start this video, which might be a little bit boring for some, um, I'd go back 50 years to February, would be 19, uh, 1972, wouldn't it? Yeah, February 1972. So here's a couple of clips from February 1972 before we get into coax cable. Right, well, I can see uh Heathkit, a page of Heathkit, which is no longer uh, available now, but there's a couple of linears at the top, a 2000 watt linear, although to be fair, that's the input power. In those days, they used to quote the input power and uh, 2000 watt linear, and it's going to cost you the princely sum of £178, or you could go down market to the 1000 watt linear, and that was 1000 watts input, probably around about five or 600 watts output, and that would be yours for £127. I wonder how many of you remember Radio Shack. They uh, no longer exist now, but they were the official importers for Drake equipment. I always yearned for a Drake. I could never afford it. I mean, the Drake TR4C, £265. That, I think, was quite expensive. It's certainly beyond my means, but I've... I've always wanted to own Drake, but I've never actually got a Drake TR4C or any other Drake transceiver. But there we are, £265 and it's yours. Well, it was then. And here's yet another name from the past, Low Electronics. Again, no longer trading now, but Low Electronics, run by that famous character Bandit Bill, was introducing an FM transceiver. FM? Who wants to run FM on two meters but some do and what do you get for your money 144.8 megahertz 145.2 megahertz and 145.4 megahertz well you can't complain about that for 84 pounds or can you you know in those days the radio spectrum was controlled by the post office not your little corner shop down the road but the big post office now known as ofcom they were making a nice little profit. A little sideline they had running in those days. Look at this, Pirates Find. And their full names and addresses were published. They were kind enough not to include the telephone number, but they were fined £10, £20, 
quite a nice little earner for the post office. And all the equipment was confiscated. I wonder what happened to it. Perhaps it appeared in the Radcom small ads. Or perhaps it found its way back to Lyle Street, that famous street in London in the 60s and 70s, selling all sorts of equipment from all sorts of sources. Well, there we are. There's a trip down memory lane for you. So back to coax cable. Coax cable, well, the, the idea of coax cable was first conceived around about 1885. The idea of containing a magnetic field such that you didn't have to worry about the feeder being near metalwork. But it wasn't until Bell Laboratories got cracking on it, they came up with a commercial version of coax cable. When I say commercial, it wasn't on, off the shelf, you know, radio amateurs were still using balanced line. But Bell Laboratories came up with this idea and they, kept, they ended up with three types of coax cable. There was a 30 ohm coax cable. The reason it was 30 ohms was because they, they wanted to find out the best form of coax cable for handling high power. And the measurements, the dimensions of this coax cable for handling high power turned out to have a characteristic, characteristic impedance of 30 ohms which wasn't entirely the most suitable coax because in those days dipoles were still one of the classic antennas and uh, a dipole has an, an impedance near 70 ohms, certainly not 30 ohms. So they then produced coax cable for 60 ohms and 80 ohms. I'm not quite sure why they had the three types, but they did. And it wasn't until much later that some bright spark thought, wait a minute, why do we want three types of coax cable? 30 ohms is great for high power, but it's no, no good for feeding dipoles. 80 ohm coax is far nearer the character, characteristic impedance of a dipole, but it won't handle the power. And somebody else said, well, why don't we sort of steer a middle field? And that's really how 50 ohm coax came about. I'm not sure when it actually became a very popular coax, because when I was first licensed, we were still using 70 ohm coax. I know that KW Electronics, their SWR meters, their ATUs were designed for 70 ohm coax, and I guess their transceivers were as well. Um, but at somewhere along the line, much later than that, 50 ohm coax started to take over. But in those days, in the early days, uh, 70 ohm coax was used for TV and ham radio operators were using 70 ohm coax. In fact, I've only recently disposed of a lab gear VSWR meter with Bell and Lee sockets on it designed for 70 ohm coax. But today we have 50 ohm coax. We need coax to feed our signal from the transceiver to the antenna. And we need to know, the most important thing is, how much do we lose on the journey? And of course, don't forget that you also lose signals receive signals on the way back down to the transceiver. So it's quite important to know what the loss is. Well, coax cable is actually very efficient. And what I've done in the figures that I'm going to show you, I've calculated what the losses are at 20 meters, because I reckon 20 meters is probably a typical length of coax cable in a lot of ham radio gardens. And the relationship between loss and length is linear. So if you, go, you lose 1 dB at 20 meter run and you have to put a 40 meter run out, you lose 2 dB. But if you've got a short length of coax with 1 dB loss at 20 meters, if you halve it to 10 meters long, you only lose half a dB. Now, you must remember that these are, or these are the losses that you lose in a length of coax before we take into account VSWR. VSWR will add to the loss, but the fact remains that the lower the loss on your length of coax, the lower the loss from VSWR as well. But when you're buying coax, all you need to know is what the loss is on that length of coax. And in actual fact, you don't need a particularly high spec for 100 watts on the HF bands, as you'll see in a minute when I put the figures up. One other thing I would strongly suggest is go onto YouTube and find out how to put a plug on the length of coax. If you've never put, on a, never put a PL259 plug on a bit of coax, go onto YouTube, find out how to do it. Same with BNC plugs, same with N plugs. There's some excellent videos on there, and it's far easier to watch the video than it is to try and read about how to put the plug on. I found some branded 
Kallax the other day at the bottom, bottom of my garden. It's got to be 10 or 15 years old. And the way to find out whether the Kallax is okay is to remove the outer covering, the outer plastic covering, and you sh should see a shiny braid. And I had to cut back about 20 metres, uh, 20 centimetres rather, uh, before I could see some shiny braid. So if you've got some old Kallax and you want to use it, cut the outer covering back and just see whether you've got some shiny braid. If you haven't, cut it back until you do, because if the shiny braid is not shiny, it's sort of corroded, um, it's dull, it may say water's got in there, you want to get rid of that bit of coax. So that's a tip. So now let's have a look at the coax coat we sell. I've chosen four brands, oh, not four brands, I've chosen four grades of coax that we sell, which covers everything from HF 100 watts up to gigahertz. So take a look and make your choice. The first cable we're going to look at is AirCell 5, which is very much a bread and butter cable for the HF operator. Even at 20 meters, the loss is just under 1 dB. And it's great for use inside the shack where you're connecting various items together because very often you've got some tight corners to get your cable around and it's, it's ideal for that. So very much a general purpose cable and ideal for the newcomer who's not quite sure what sort of aerial he's going to end up with and how much cable he will ultimately want. AirCell 7 is a somewhat thicker cable. It will certainly handle the UK power limit on HF and it's very usable up to 6 metres where you'll get a loss of less than 1 dB. It will also function on 2 metres and uh, it's a cable I've personally used on 2 metres as well. It's uh, quite, uh, quite a usable cable. So it's a good general purpose cable for HF and the lower part of the VHF re region and if you're going to run high power or the maximum UK limit it's a perfect cable for that. Now we come to our most popular cable for the VHF and UHF enthusiast. Ecoflex is a German manufactured cable, manufactured at an extremely high standard and very popular for VHF and UHF operators. 2 meters the dB loss is 1 dB for a 20 meter run and even at 70 centimetres it's less than 2 dB. 23 sems, it's acceptable for a lot of operators and it's the sort of cable that most people go for when they're looking at a VHF UHF station. Finally we take a look at Ecoflex 15 which is our highest quality cable and it's designed for the gigahertz operator or for those that have a particularly long run on 2 meters and 70 cms because on 2 meters even a 40 meter run will only have just over 1 dB loss so it's a very good cable but for the serious operator if you're going to go into the gigahertz region this is the cable that you really need to look at. Now if you have a long cable run or you're thinking of installing a number of antennas it makes sense to consider purchasing a reel of cable and the prices for reels of cable are on our website as well as the meter prices and while talking about uh, our website I should mention that we also carry all the necessary connectors for these cables that we've just discussed so check those on our website as well. <music> The slimmest coax we do is the AirCell 5 and as you can see here you can coil it quite easily. You can see that. You can actually make um, a line isolator with that coiling up into quite a, a tight coil like that. So very, um, very pliable. You can see how you can actually make it. So I think if I was going to make a line isolator I might well consider this cable because it's uh, it's quite nice, it's got, it's got a good spec for HF and um, very slim. You could easily drill a hole through the wall and pass it through. But there we are, that's the AirCell 5 and it's uh, quite pliable as I say. You could make a very compact coil with it. Now we move up to the AirCell 7 which is a bit thicker. But it's still very pliable. I mean, I can make a, a coil quite easily like that. 
that would make a li nice line isolator at the top of the feed point on a, an HF antenna and of course down at the station end. It's got a good spec. I would say this is a good general purpose HF coax cable with a good spec, uh, a good name and it's nice to handle. Now we come to a serious cable for the VHF and uh, UHF operator, the Echoflex 10 Plus. It's still pliable, you can still wind it, I don't think you could wind a choke coil very easily with it but uh, you might manage it, uh, but it's still quite uh, nice to handle. But it fills the business and it's got a good spec, um, it obviously is uh, much thicker than the previous two cables, but here we are, we can wind it into a core quite easily like that, It'll probably get tighter actually. Uh, it's got a slight, uh, well it's got a gloss to it actually, but the, it just feels nice, it feels a nice cable. I think that outer uh, covering there would last for, for years, and that's uh, quite important really for uh, antenna cable to make sure it's going to last. And finally we come to the Echoflex 15. Now this is a hunky cable. It is really chunky. It's got a beautiful outer covering that's going to last for years. It's got a very good spec and I think this is the cable that the VHF UHF operators would go for. It's a good investment. It's got a good spec even up at 1296 and above that it'll go up into the gigahertz. I think it's rated up to about 8 gigahertz. So this is a serious investment. As I say it's tough, it feels good, it fills the business. I think that that would weather for years. Um, and if you revisit the spec on this video, I think you'll be impressed. This is the Echoflex 15. It's the business. Four coax cables that you can look at that cover the complete spectrum and that we'd be happy to supply and guaranteed that the specification is the same as uh, what you've just read on the screen. So what am I going to do next? Well, I'm going to carry on having a look at this, the uh, Zigu X6100, still with its protective wrapping on the screen. Oh yeah, but it looks. Uh, oh, sorry about that noise. There we are, it's wrapping off. Um, it's a nice uh, little transceiver. So I'll spend a little while further examining this radio and uh, seeing what it can do. There we are, it's fired up now. It takes a few seconds to fire up. Yeah, keep in touch and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.